Patronage is the support, encouragement, privilege, or financial aid that an organization or individual bestows to another. In the history of art, art's patronage refers to the support that kings, popes and the wealthy have provided to artists such as musicians, painters, and sculptors. It can also refer to the right of bestowing offices or church benefices, the business given to a store by a regular customer, and the guardianship of saints. The word patron derives from the Latin patronusa, one who gives benefits to his clients. In some countries the term is used to describe political patronage, which is the use of state resources to reward individuals for their electoral support. Some patronage systems are legal, as in the Canadian tradition of the Prime Minister to appoint senators and the heads of a number of commissions and agencies. In many cases, these appointments go to people who have supported the political party of the Prime Minister. As well, the term may refer to a type of corruption or favoritism in which a party in power rewards groups, families ethnicities for their electoral support using illegal gifts or fraudulently awarded appointments or government contracts. Arts. From the ancient world onward, patronage of the arts was important in art history. It is known in greatest detail in reference to medieval and Renaissance Europe, though patronage can also be traced in feudal Japan, the traditional Southeast Asian kingdoms and elsewhere, art patronage tended to arise wherever a royal or imperial system and an aristocracy dominated a society and controlled a significant share of resources. Samuel Johnson defined a patron as one who looks with unconcern on a man struggling for life in the water, and, when he has reached ground, encumbers him with help. Rulers, nobles and very wealthy people used patronage of the arts to endorse their political ambitions, social positions, and prestige. That is, patrons operated as sponsors. Most languages other than English still use the term mecenate, derived from the name of Gaius Mecenas, generous friend and advisor to the Roman Emperor Augustus. Some patrons, such as the Medici of Florence, used artistic patronage to cleanse wealth that was perceived as ill-gotten through usury. Art patronage was especially important in the creation of religious art. The Roman Catholic Church and later Protestant groups sponsored art and architecture, as seen in churches, cathedrals, painting, sculpture and handicrafts. While sponsorship of artists and the commissioning of artwork is the best-known aspect of the patronage system, other disciplines also benefited from patronage, including those who studied natural philosophy, musicians, writers, philosophers, alchemists, astrologers, and other scholars. Artists as diverse and important as Creation de Troyes, Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo, William Shakespeare, and Ben Jonson all sought and enjoyed the support of noble or ecclesiastical patrons. Figures as late as Mozart and Beethoven also participated in the system to some degree. It was only with the rise of bourgeois and capitalist social forms in the middle 19th century that European culture moved away from its patronage system to the more publicly supported system of museums, theatres, mass audiences and mass consumption that is familiar in the contemporary world. This kind of system continues across many fields of the arts. Though the nature of the sponsors has changed, from churches to charitable foundations, and from aristocrats to plutocrats, the term patronage has a more neutral connotation than in politics. It may simply refer to direct support of an artist, for example by grants. In the later part of the 20th century, the academic subdiscipline of patronage studies began to evolve, in recognition of the important and often neglected role that the phenomenon of patronage had played in the cultural life of previous centuries. Journalism. While most news companies, particularly in North America, are funded through advertising revenue, secondary funding sources include audience members and philanthropists who donate to for profit and non profit organizations. Politics. Political leaders have at their disposal a great deal of patronage, in the sense that they make decisions on the appointment of officials inside and outside government. 
Patronage is therefore a recognized power of the executive branch. In most countries the executive has the right to make many appointments, some of which may be lucrative. In some democracies, high-level appointments are reviewed or approved by the legislature. In other countries, such as those using the Westminster system, this is not the case. Other types of political patronage may violate the laws or ethics codes such as when political leaders engage in nepotism and cronyism such as fraudulently awarding non-competitive government contracts to friends or relatives or pressuring the public service to hire an unqualified family member or friend. Philippines political patronage, also known as padrino system, also a slang call as balilimeng, in the Philippines, has been the source of many controversies and corruption. It has been an open secret that one cannot join the political arena of the Philippines without mastery of the Padrino system. From the lowest barangay official to the President of the Republic, it is expected that one gains political debts and dispenses political favor to advance one's career or gain influence, if not wealth. Russia after Soviet leader Vladimir Lenin's retirement from politics in March 1923, following a stroke. A power struggle began between Soviet Premier Alexei Rykov, Pravda editor Nikolai Bukharin, Prof. and turn leader Mikhail Tomsky, Red Army founder Leon Trotsky, former Premier Lev Kamenev, Comintern leader Grigory Zinoviev, and General Secretary Joseph Stalin. Stalin used patronage to appoint many Stalinist delegates to the party Politburo and Sovnarkom in order to sway the votes in his favor, making Stalin the effective leader of the country by 1929. United States In the United States during the Gilded Age, patronage became a controversial issue. Tammany boss William M. Tweed was an American politician who ran what is considered now to have been one of the most corrupt political machines in the country's history. Tweed and his cronies ruled for a brief time with absolute power over the city and state of New York. At the height of his influence, Tweed was the third largest landowner in New York City, a director of the Erie Railway, the Tenth National Bank, and the New York Printing Company, as well as proprietor of the Metropolitan Hotel. At times he was a member of the United States House of Representatives, the New York City Board of Advisors, and the New York State Senate. In 1873, Tweed was convicted for diverting between $40 million and $200 million of public monies. When James Garfield became president, he appointed corrupt men to several offices. This provoked the ire of the stalwarts. Charles J. Gaito assassinated Garfield in 1881, six months after he became president. To prevent further political violence and to assuage public outrage, Congress passed the Pendleton Act in 1883, which set up the Civil Service Commission. Henceforth, applicants for most federal government jobs would have to pass an examination. Federal politicians' influence over bureaucratic appointments waned, and patronage declined as a national political issue. Beginning in 1969, a Supreme Court case in Chicago, Michael L. Shakeman v. Democratic Organization of Cook County, occurred involving political patronage and its constitutionality. Shakeman claimed that much of the patronage going on in Chicago politics was unlawful on the grounds of the First and Fourteenth Amendments. Through a series of legal battle and negotiations, the two parties agreed upon the Shakeman decrees. Under these decrees it was declared that the employment status of most public employees could not be affected positively or negatively based on political allegiance, with exceptions for politically inclined positions. The case is still in negotiation today, as there are points yet to be decided. Political patronage is not always considered corrupt. In the United States, the U.S. Constitution provides the president with the power to appoint individuals to government positions. He also may appoint personal advisors without congressional approval. Not surprisingly, these individuals tend to be supporters of the president. Similarly, at the state and local levels, governors and mayors retain appointments powers. 
Some scholars have argued that patronage may be used for laudable purposes, such as the recognition of minority communities through the appointment of their members to a high-profile positions. Fairfield has argued that patronage be used for four general purposes create or strengthen a political organization, achieve democratic or egalitarian goals, bridge political divisions and create coalitions, and to alter the existing patronage system. Venezuela Bola Burguesia is a term that was coined by journalist Juan Carlos Zapata in order to define the oligarchy that has developed under the protection of the Chavez government. During Hugo Chavez's tenure, he seized thousands of properties and businesses while all also reducing the footprint of foreign companies. Venezuela's economy was then largely state-run and was operated by military officers that had their business and government affairs connected. Senior fellow at the Brookings Institution, Harold Trincunas, stated that involving the military in business was a danger, with Trincunas explaining that the Venezuelan military has the greatest ability to coerce people into business like they have. According to Bloomberg Business B, why showering contracts on former military officials and pro-government business executives? Chavez put a new face on the system of patronage, charity, charitable and other non-profit making organizations often seek an influential figurehead to act as patron. The relationship often does not involve money, as well as conferring credibility. These people can use their contacts and charisma to assist the organization to raise funds or to affect government policy. The British royal family are especially prolific in this respect, devoting a large proportion of their time to a wide range of causes. Commercial. Sometimes consumers support smaller or local businesses or corporations out of loyalty even if less expensive options exist. Their regular custom is referred to as patronage. Patronage may entitle members of a consumer's cooperative to a share of the surplus or profit generated by the coup, called a patronage refund. This refund is a form of dividend. Science. There are historical examples where the noble classes finance scientific pursuits. Many barmakers were patrons of the sciences which greatly helped the propagation of Indian science and scholarship from the neighboring academy of Gundisha poor into the Arabic world. They patronized scholars such as Geber and Jabril ibn Bukhshu. They are also credited with the establishment of the first paper mill in Baghdad. The power of the barmakids in those times is reflected in the Book of 1001 Nights. The vizier Jafar appears in several stories as well as a tale that gave rise to the expression, Barmicide Feast. We know of Yahya B. Khalid al-Barmaki as a patron of physicians and, specifically, of the translation of Hindu medical works into both Arabic and Persian. In all likelihood, however, his activity took place in the orbit of the caliphal court in Iraq, where at the behest of Harun al-Rashid, such books were translated into Arabic. Thus Khorasan and Transoxania were effectively bypassed in this transfer of learning from India to Islam, even though, undeniably the Barmakish cultural outlook owed something to their land of origin, northern Afghanistan, and Yahya al-Barmaki's interest in medicine may have derived from no longer identifiable family tradition, sports. In the same manner as commercial patronage, those who attend a sporting event may be referred to as patrons, though the usage in much of the world is now considered archaic, with some notable exceptions. Those who attend the Masters Tournament, one of the four major championship of professional golf, are still traditionally referred to as patrons, largely at the insistence of the Augusta National Golf Club. This insistence is occasionally made fun of by sports writers and other media. In polo, a patron is a person who puts together a team by hiring one or more professionals. The rest of the team may be amateurs, often including the patron himself. Also, people who attend hurling or Gaelic football games organized by the Gaelic Athletic Association are referred to as patrons. 
Ecclesiastical, Catholic Patronage of Our Lady The liturgical feast of the Patronage of Our Lady was first permitted by decree of the Sacred Congregation of Rites on 6 May 1679, for all the ecclesiastical provinces of Spain, in memory of the victories obtained over the Saracens heretics and other enemies from the 6th century to the reign of Philip IV of Spain. Pope Benedict XII ordered it to be kept in the Papal States on the third Sunday of November. To other places it is granted, on request, for some Sunday in November, to be designated by the ordinary. In many places the Feast of the Patronage is held with an additional Marian title of Queen of All Saints, of Mercy, Mother of Graces. The office is taken entirely from the common of the Blessed Virgin, and the masses that serve Sancta Parins. The Greeks have no feast of this kind, but the Ruthenians, followed by all the Slavs of the Greek Rite, have a feast, called Petrosini Sancta Simi Domina etc., or Pokrov Bogorodice, fixed on the 1st of October, which, however, would seem to correspond more with the Catholic feast of the Scapula. Anglican see main article parish in the Church of England. Patronage is the commonly used term for the right to present a candidate to a benefice. Presbytery in the Church Patronage Act 1711 resulted in multiple secessions from the Church of Scotland, including the secession of 1733, which led to the formation of the Associate Presbytery, the secession of 1761, which led to the formation of the Relief Church and the disruption of 1843, which led to the formation of the Free Church of Scotland.